Welcome everyone to the August meeting of the Southern Oregon Water Group. We are here today with Terry and Lisa from SAGE and we are very, very excited to learn about SAGE's tools. So I guess with that, um, Terry and Lisa, do you wanna go ahead and just dive in and introduce yourselves? Thank you. Um, my name's Terry Edmonds and I am a partner account manager for the SAGE Accountants Network. Um, I work with accountants um, in the central and west uh, territories of the U.S. and I also work with Canada. Um, and we're delighted to be here today. Um, I've been with SAGE for about five years, uh, a little over five years, and worked with um, not only direct clients, but also with our accountants. And I worked with our fixed asset software as well. Um, Lisa? Yes. Um, hello, I'm Lisa Beaver, and I am a cloud solutions engineer here with Sage. I've been with Sage for a little over seven years and been working with the accountants division from day one. And I will be doing the tech uh, demo for us after. Um, Terry gets to introduce a little bit more of what Sage is and what we can do to partner you, with Lisa. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lisa. So um, for those who don't know about Sage or are not really as familiar, um, Sage just celebrated its 40th birthday this year. It was kind of fun, it had a lot of parties. Um, but Sage was founded in Newcastle, England by David Goldman who wanted a way to quickly create quotes for his print business and to keep his keep track of his accounts. Um, so pretty simple, wanted to start something to take care of his own personal clients. And today Sage has grown into a global company that boasts over 13,000 colleagues that are dedicated to the people that make businesses thrive. And, um, Did we support want? about, uh, yeah, that page there, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Sage supports approximately 3 million customers um, whose businesses create about two thirds of all jobs. Um, we create, uh, we work to create a world that frees them from as administrative burden so that they can focus on what they love. And one thing I'm particularly proud of is our Sage Foundation. Sage offers colleagues five paid days each year to spend giving back to our communities. And our specific focus is organizations that support women, children, and our military families. Uh, just prior to lockdown, our Lawrenceville, Georgia campus packed approximately 10,000 meals for Rise Against Hunger. And that's an event that we're going to duplicate again later this year. In November, we're planning on doing that again and getting another 10,000 meals sent out. Um, and we also worked with our local foster care system, decorating and stuffing duffel bags and putting together new bikes that were donated to get donated over to them uh, for use in the foster care uh, system. Um, if you don't know Sage, you may know Sage. <laughs> um, a lot of people don't know our rebranding. Sage rebranded a lot of their products about six years, six, seven years ago. Um, so when we say Sage 50, you may know that as Peachtree Accounting. Um, and again, Mass 90, Mass 200, Master Builder, Pack, and Timberline are all um, products that have been rebranded under the Sage name. So you might not think you know Sage, but you probably know Sage through one of those products that have been around for quite a while. Um, Sage has a long history of providing innovative solutions to accountants and bookkeepers around the world, solutions that help them run their practice, but also allow them to collaborate more closely with their clients. Sage is focused on enabling an ecosystem of accounting professionals who contribute to our mutual growth and who want to build customers and clients for life. We value our accountants and our bookkeepers and consider them a strategic family and will only grow if we work together. One value that Sage offers to our, our accountants network members is a client advisory service. Um, some people might ask why uh, client advisory, uh, but Gary Boomer, a visionary and strategist uh, to accounting professionals answers this simply when he says to remain relevant and future ready, accounting firms must meet the needs and wants of their clients. And I think this past year has really proven the truth of that, um, the value of accountants to businesses um, that they support. More than ever, companies are relying on advice and guidance from their accountants um, and providing just tax advice is 
not going to make it. It's now necessary to remain an integral part of their businesses by providing other solutions, other advice. Now that um, the uh, CAS, the toolkit, it's a client advisory uh, services toolkit that we offer to our accountants network. It's the heart of our program. The toolkit consists of eight learning tracks or pillars, and each of the pillars is centered around an advisory service theme and contains tools and resources that can be downloaded and used to build your knowledge. Um, for example, the verticals and market segmentation, you can select and enter vertical markets such as nonprofit and professional services, restaurants and others. Um, the key performance indicators uh, works with measuring results with key performance indicators and critical success factors. Um, there's a module on pack packaging and pricing, uh, building the right pricing model with tools and resources to help you accurately determine fees and value price for your services. Um, the talent recruitment and development, it helps you recruit top talent to manage your outsourced accounting services. Client engagement process manages the client engagement uh, assessment and services design to implementation and more. Developing uh, business development marketing is designed to develop a marketing and sales plan to ensure you continue to add more clients. Um, engagement letters and services has comprehensive engagement letters and contracts. Uh, business planning helps to develop a business plan to develop your own client accounting advisory service practice. Now, this program with all its content is valued at around $2,000 if you were to engage with an outside consulting organization such as Boomer Consulting um, to create a personalized version of this program for your firm, you'd pay probably as much as $15,000. With Sage, it comes a part of our accountants network. Um, so it is a, a free offering to our accountants network members. And again, we always strive to serve our accounting profession with innovation, technology, and empowerment. And this mission to serve the profession, profession, we've built a comprehensive ecosystem that will provide support in different areas of your business outside of our world-class accounting technology, uh, providing vital services such as digital marketing, marketing and SEO, robotic process automation, AP automation, client advisory services toolkit, um, lending and funding, HR solutions, professional development, and many more. And here's a list of some of the um, partners that we work with right now in that ecosystem. Lisa? All right, great. Thanks, Terry. Um, so I've done my introduction. I am Lisa Beaver. I went ahead and took myself off the video just so we could um, have a bigger screen as we dive into the solution now. Um, and this is for you. So if you have any questions, please feel free to um, stop me at any point, ask me any questions. I wanna make sure that you're getting everything out of this presentation that you'd like to. So we're gonna be looking at the Sage Accounting and what Sage Accounting can do for you. We're also gonna look at the Sage Accountants dashboard, which is complimentary for our accountant professionals. The full overview of our Sage Business Cloud Accounting solution. We'll take a sneak peek into auto entry um, and that works, it's product agnostic. So it works a diff across your different accounting packages, including QuickBooks, Zero, um, And we're gonna spend most of the time in the live demo of the accounting solutions. And of course, we're here to answer any questions that you may have. And I like to start out with a fun polling question. So we didn't set up the polls. Um, here, but you can go ahead and chat these in. So I know you guys are in Oregon. We were just in Vegas at the AICPA um, Engage Conference and hardly anybody got this right. So which hotel built in 1941 was the first hotel resort to ever be built on the Strip? Was it the Flamingo, Aladdin, Dunes, or El Rancho? And I see somebody said, wow, I have no clue. Yeah, this was a, a tough question and I, I searched the internet for a tough question because I know a lot of people know a lot about Vegas. Um, but the answer is El Rancho. So um, that's your little, 
little trivia question of the day there that you can try on somebody else. So let's go ahead and talk about Sage Accounting. It is a native cloud solution, nothing you need to install. And yes, it will work on Macs. I know I have some Mac lovers out there, works on any of your different devices. We have the mobile apps as well. So whether you're using Android or iPhone, you're able to download those apps and then be able to see that same type of data, whether you're on your desktop or your mobile app. You can access the data from anywhere anytime and your clients can be in there using the solution at the same time, it's not a problem. And it does come with unlimited users with customizable permissions. So you don't have to pay extra for additional users. And then the, uh, the accountant's dashboard is complimentary for you. So if you'd like to set up your accountant's dashboard, let us know in the chat feature, we will send the link out to you and it's gonna allow you to play around in a sample account. You can easily invite your clients um, or set up your clients books if you manage those and work from this one central dashboard um, to be able to work in those books. You can decide who owns the billing. You can give them access to different features in the program, role-based access as well. And this is showing you what those mobile apps um, might look like. So you can be in front of your customer and do a quote or an invoice or take a payment. You can be snapping the pictures of your receipts and pushing those right into the program. Um, so they go in there and you don't have to worry about trying to keep all those receipts. And some of the key features of Sage Accounting, you can set it up to do cash or accrual. You can also do multi-currency with live exchange rates. You can also do your check printing. It has interactive dashboards in here. Um, you could do your cash flow, connect to your different bank and credit card feeds. So all of that information comes in automatically for you. And you can also import those statements. So if you wanted to go back to last year or the beginning of this year, it's not a problem getting that data into the program. You can set up bank rules as well to automate that even further. You can, um, we talked about the unlimited users, but when we jump over to sales and invoicing, it has a great invoicing feature in here. You can set up a quote or an estimate and one click, turn it into an invoice, email that invoice off to the customer who can open it up and pay it right online. So there's a lot of great automation. You can set up recurring invoices. You can see that invoice timeline. So you know when they've looked at the invoice or paid it. And then the data, um, very easy to get your data into the solution through some easy to use CSV files. So you can kind of clean that data up as well when you bring it in and choose what you wanna bring in. And then we have all of our different reporting methods, including a custom report builder, which I'll show you as well. And the green highlighted ones are just some of the features that are um, more well known and, and used in the solution like quote to invoice, it does all of these, but those are just some that we really wanted to highlight. We have a full audit trail in the solution. Now bank feeds is one of the most loved areas of the solution and this allows you to connect to your different banks and financial institutions. We do not charge you for additional accounts. You're going to have as many as you would like and it eliminates the need to download and import bank statements manually. It reduces human error. It saves you a lot of time and it's going to match up to transactions that might already be in the program or you can add them on the fly as you work through the bank feeds. And again, there's no uh, limit on usage and you can also set up bank rules and that's gonna automate that a lot more for you, saving you even more time. And I'll demonstrate that during the live demo. And this is kind of showing you what that bank uh, feed might look like. And I know they're gonna be passing out this presentation after the webinar. So I just wanted to make sure you had some screenshots, but you'll see where rules are applied. And up here at the top, I have 142 transactions. And in one click, I can create all 142 of those transactions. So think about um, how much time that's going to save you between your credit card feeds, your bank feeds, between your different clients. If, it, if you're doing an invoice, in this case, it's found a match for an invoice that's in the solution. So you can match it up right to that 
invoice or that expense. You have your cash flow statement and cash flow forecast. So interactive graphs in here to show you how the business is trending. Customized reporting. So those classes or dimensional accounting, you can go in here and customize how you wanna track that data. And then in reporting, you're gonna be able to drill down into those different classes to be able to see that income for each level um, of a, you know, a project or a, um, maybe a service that you offer. And we'll look at that as well. And then we have the audit trail breakdown, which is a popular report. To sh so you can see everything that's been done in the program and you can even drill down into different types of transactions in the program. And then we have our custom report builder. And this one allows you to go in here and look at the custom reports. They're nice colorful reports. These are the type of reports that your clients probably prefer to see. They're easily understood. Here's my gross profit, my net profit. I can see bar charts. Um, so some really nice colorful reports and you can custom build reports in here as well as importing reports. So let's go ahead and take a live look at it. So I'm gonna go in here and we're gonna look at our um, dashboard here. So here's our accountant's dashboard. This is complimentary for you. So remember, just let us know if you want your complimentary dashboard. And it's gonna come with this Christina Lopez account. That's gonna be your sample account. So you can get in here and get some hands-on in the solution. And then as you invite or set up your other clients' books, they're gonna be listed here in your dashboard. And then from this one central dashboard, you just go in here and click on whichever client that you would like to go in there and work on. Now, let me show you how easy it is to go in here and set up your client's books. If I go over here to the invite client button and click on it, I can say that, no, I wanna pay for the subscription because you're gonna get it at the lowest cost. If a client was to buy it, it would be $25 a month. With you paying for the subscription and owning that subscription, all we need from you is a first, last name and telephone number, or this could be the business name. You click on next, and it's gonna show you that you're gonna get this account for $12.50 per month for as long as you use it. And you just click on subscribe. It takes you to the credit card screen where you go ahead and put in your credit card information. You only have to do that with the first client. It's gonna remember it after that. And then from this one central dashboard, you're gonna be able to go into your client's books. So let's go ahead and click on the Lopez Consultant. I'm gonna click on access to access the account. And now I'm in my client's books. Now up here at the top, it's telling me whose client's books that I'm in. And that when I'm done working in this account, I can click here to resume being myself. Now, if I choose to have my client um, go in here and work in the program with me. All I have to do is click on, do you work with colleagues? Click on the invite user and then go ahead and put in their email address and what permissions you want them to have in the program. And then they're gonna be able to go and sign into only their own account. They don't see the rest of your accounts. And again, that's unlimited. Okay, and then very easy to set up the account. If the, you know, the client's gonna be going in here setting up part of this right here on the getting started, it'll walk them through important customers, their opening balances, connecting to bank accounts, important their vendors, the chart of accounts. But for my accountant professionals, I wanna show you how easy it is because most of the time you are the one setting these accounts up for your clients. So let's go to settings. And right here under financial settings, we wanna to go to the heart of the program, the chart of accounts. That's the first thing we wanna go in here and look at. And you have two choices here. You can either go over here with the blue bar and hover over the down arrow and you would have an import account. Now I've started this account, so I don't have import, I just have export. But you would import your own chart of accounts or you can customize the chart of accounts that we have in the program. So if I go up here and let's just look at current assets. And let's say the particular account you're setting up right now for this client, they don't use inventory. I can click on it and I can deselect it. That way it doesn't show up in my ledger accounts. 
or I can go in here and edit this information. Visibility is where they're going to be able to see that particular account. Now, on top of that, I can add new custom ledger accounts for their business. So if I click on new ledger account, this is where I can go in here and set up those customized ledger accounts for their business. So that's the first thing you want to do is go in here and either import the chart of accounts or customize the one that we have. The second one's right below that, and that is fiscal year and accounting method. And what you're going to want to do here is set in the year and date for the business. If you want to use lockdown periods, you can. And then the start date is when you're going to start putting information into this program, so populating the account. You have your retention period, and then do you want this account to be in cash or accrual basis? And you just save that. Now, when you first set up the account, it's going to ask you if you charge sales taxes. And if you say yes, it's going to automatically set up your local sales tax rates for you. But you can also go in here and set up additional sales tax rates or combination sales tax rates. And then once you've done the chart of accounts and the, the fiscal year and accounting method, it's a matter of starting to import the data that you want to bring in. So you can go in here, you can import your sales quick entries, your expense quick entries, your customers and vendors, your products and services and stock items, your bank and credit card statements, your chart of accounts, and these opening balances. So let's look at importing. So I'm going to click on my customer opening balances. And again, it's all done through the blue drop down bar here. And we're always going to give you a template CSV file. Everybody knows how to use Excel. It makes it very easy to see exactly what you're importing, clean anything up, and then you're just going to upload it right into the program. So let's look at a couple of those files. This would be your chart of accounts file. So you always keep the header row in place. And this is the standard chart of accounts, but you can go in here and input your own chart of accounts and upload it. And we also have, I'll open the opening balances so you can see that. Again, always keep the header row in place and then just copy and paste the information that you want to bring in here. All right, now let me go back and let me get back into my file here. And then this is where you're going to choose the file and go ahead and upload it in the program. So very easy to get that information in. And if you have any questions on what does this file look like or what's mandatory, there's always a little help file here. And that will take you directly to the help area of the program. And it's going to show you the template file and, and give you some tips on bringing that data in, but it's, it's very easy and straightforward. Now, also in this help file, it's going to show you what's new every month in the program, how to get started. I showed you how easy it is, but you can also go in here and it's going to walk you through getting started. You have some videos in here that's going to assist you as well. If you look at this later on and you're wondering, you know, what's the first steps. So all of our help features are right there. And not only that, we also have a little help chat button up here. So Monday through Friday from 9 to 8 Eastern time, you're able to go in here and chat live with our support team um, right through the program. And usually it only takes a couple minutes and you're chatting with support. Now, once you've imported your data, it's a matter of connecting to the banks because this is where all of that information is going to flow in on a daily basis for you making it very easy to get all of this data into the program. So again, you can have as many accounts as you like. I have checking accounts, cash accounts, credit card accounts. To set up a new account, all you do is go over here to the new and click on bank account. And it's going to ask you what type of account are you wanting to create this time? Is it a checking account, a savings account, credit card account? cash loan or other. So let's just say we want to create a new checking account. Let's name this one Union Bank. And we'll go ahead and give it an account number. And I'm going to click on Save. So it's going to create this new bank for me. And I'm going to go ahead and click on it. 
And now I have the option here of going in here. Let's say I wanted to go back to last year or the beginning of the year. If I needed to import some statements, I can go in here and import those statements. And I can import them by QIF, which is Quicken, OFX, or CSV. And you just put in your statement and balance and the statement reference, so month and year, and upload it right into the account. And then when you have it to a more current date, or if you want to start now, moving forward, or last couple months, you can connect live to the bank. So right here, connect to bank. It's going to ask you um, to connect to your bank, and it'll show you the most popular banks we connect to. If there's a bank you would like me to check for you, please feel free to send it over to me in the chat button. And what you're going to do here, and if it's a bank that's not listed under this little search field, I can type Union Bank, and you're going to see all of these different banks populate. Um, you guys are in Oregon, so let me just put in Oregon, and you're probably going to see a lot of your local banks in here. So you got Bank of Eastern Oregon, Community First Bank, you've got College Savings Plans, Employment Retirement Plans, Credit Unions, Credit Cards. You get the idea. They're all going to be listed here for you. And you would just click on the bank that you want to connect. Accept the terms and conditions. It's going to tell you that we use Plaid to connect to our banks. It is set to bank security, so you don't have to worry about that. And it is private. We never see your credentials. Because when you click Continue, you're going to be signing into your bank portal. And you're going to go ahead and put in your credentials. It's going to ask you which account you want to connect to. And then what date range do you want to bring those transactions over from? And then on a daily basis, it's going to go out there and pull in any new transactions for you. So let's go ahead and look at these transactions that it pulls in for us. On the left-hand side is what comes in from the bank. And on the right-hand side is how you're going to add it to the program. So you can see here, it's going to remember how you categorize your transactions and automatically categorize them for you. So I have professional fees, federal payroll taxes, property and equipment, office supplies. So you're going to go in here, take a look at them and say, yes, this was for office supplies expense. I paid by credit card. Go ahead and create that for me, and it creates it on the fly. You go down to the next one. Yes, this was for an invoice payment from Hamill Manufacturing. They wrote me a check. Go ahead and create that for me. Okay. Um, and you have three choices here, match, create, and transfer. For those clients that's not using the solution, very easy to connect to the banks. I have a firm in Alabama. I've got 167 clients set up. He went in here, imported the chart of accounts, set up their opening balances, and connected to the banks. And his bookkeepers go in here, manage the banks, bank feeds every month. So it can be that simple. But you'll see match, create, and transfer. So creates for those on the fly um, creations. Match would be if you're using the program to do your invoicing, to do your expenses. And it sees that amount in that date range it's going to highlight the word match and match it up to that transaction. Now you can also use match for, let's say that this $10,000 is for five checks that we went and did a bulk deposit in the bank. I can click on the word match. And now what it's going to do is show me all of my open transactions. It's taken just a minute. Let me see. I don't. Okay, here we go. So let's say in that bulk deposit that I took to the bank, I had a check for this invoice, a check for this invoice, a check for this invoice, and I had two more checks I didn't even have in my system yet. I can go down here to new transaction and I can add those other two checks on the fly to make up that bulk deposit. I could also tie it into those different projects that I'm working on or different services that I'm doing. I have rental properties I'm tracking, you can tie them into those different classes. All right, and then another example of this $10,000, let's say that all $10,000 of this is not for professional fees. 
I need to split it up between different GL accounts. Over here next to the create button, we have the little split button. I can click on the split button and now I can say out of that $10,000, only 5,000 of it is for professional fees. Maybe another 2,000 of it is for prepaid expenses. And then maybe the last 3,000 of it is for property and equipment. You can split it out between those different GL accounts. And if it's a split that's always going to happen, you can also create a rule. That way, every time it comes in, it splits it up this way for you automatically. Now, transfer would be if you had transferred money from one account to, the, to another account, you could show that transfer of funds from maybe a checking account over to a credit card account. But you're not moving money. You're just simply showing that transfer. OK. All right, I see a question is set of rentals. Can you have class and our location options? Absolutely, and we're gonna be going into that and I'll show you exactly what, it's totally customizable, so great question. Now let's talk about bank rules for a minute. So you'll see here, I have different areas where um, I have these green rule applied across different transactions. So for any transaction, that you have coming into your account that's a recurring transaction. So like a car payment, maybe a bank fee is always gonna be tied to bank fees and interest, your electric bills, gas bills, they're always gonna be tied to that same account. You're gonna to wanna to create a rule. Very easy to go in here and create a rule. Just click on create a rule button. Anything with the asterisk mandatory in this product. So we can give it a rule name. So we can call this one wages. Notice it brought in my conditions. It brought in the name and the amount. Now I can change these conditions or if the amount's always gonna change, I can just delete it. It brought in my transaction type, my ledger account and my tax rate. So I can just save this rule. And what it's going to do is I can rerun that rule and it's going to look for any transactions that meet that criteria and apply a rule next to them. And then instead of me having to go in here, because I know they're always going to be tied to the same account, and hitting create 125 times, I can hit that create all button, and it's going to create all 125 of these transactions for me. Now, you can always go in here and edit the rule if something should change or you want to delete it, but rules are going to save you a huge amount of time month over month. All right, let's go back out to banking. Look at a couple other things. So we all know that there's times where cash needs to be in or out of the system. Sage lets you do that in just a couple steps. So under new, we have expense payments or sales receipt. So let's look at if we had, if they've spent some cash out of their business and you need to get that in here. If I go to other payment here, vendor's optional. So let's say that we went and we took some money out of the petty cash drawer. They spent some cash out of their own pocket and you'll see the different methods here. And let's say that they spent $18.65 and they brought in some donuts um, for the meeting that we were having. I can go in here and again, those classes that are totally customizable. I can go in here and say it was for um, a meeting about our new rental property. It was a meeting about um, a consultation that we're doing. It was a meeting about this project that we're working on. I can go to the paper clip. I can upload my receipt so they know that, yes, I did buy donuts for our meeting. Here's the receipt for it, right? Um, and I can save that. So it's very easy to get money in or out of the system through those bank um, right here, expense payments or sales receipts. You also have your check register where you can print your checks. So let's go to an expense. I'll show you how easy it would be to print checks if you would like to. Let's go to new bill. And a lot of times people just let these come in straight through the bank feed so they don't have to manually enter these, but some people like to enter their bills ahead of time. 
and have that transaction with it. So let's say that we are going to go in here and we will do some trading fees. So I'm gonna go in here, description, I'm gonna put in trading fees and I'm gonna say that I spent $50 on those trading fees. Again, the three dots, I can track those classes. So I can go in here and track it if I wanted to by any of these customized areas. So I think you asked about locations earlier. So right here, store one, right? I've got my receipt here so I can upload my files. I'm just gonna go ahead and save this. So we created a new bill. And now if I wanted to print a check for it, I could click on record payment. It's gonna ask me which account am I paying it from? I'm gonna say my checking account. My method of payment is at cash, check, electronic, credit, debit card, or PayPal. I'm gonna say I'm gonna write a check. And I click on the record button. It's gonna ask me, do I wanna write out my check manually? Do I wanna print the check right now? Or you know what, put it in my print queue and I'm gonna print all my checks at the end of the day when I'm ready. It marks it as paid. And now when I go back to banking at the end of the day, I'm gonna print the checks that I have in here. I go into my check register and then behind each one of my accounts, it's gonna tell me how many checks I'm waiting to print. And then I can just go in here. Let's look at the one that we just created down here. And I can mark it and just tell it, you know what, I wanna go ahead and print the check. And by the way, you can print these checks using QuickBooks voucher, Sage 50 checks, um, very easy to go in here and print your checks. You go to settings and then you're just gonna choose what type of check stock that you're using. Here's the QuickBooks vouchers. You can test your print setup to get that going. So that's how you can print your checks. So now let's go back to summary tab. And let's start back at the beginning. Um, so this getting started, once you have the account all set up, you can hide this getting started page. And what you're gonna see is the sales. How are the sales trending for this business? What's doing overdue in invoices? Your top five customers, your receivables, your overdue sales invoices, a breakdown on your quotes and estimates. So what's been one pending expired or lost? Your expenses, how are the expenses trending? Right, it even gives them a breakdown of their ledger account so they can see where some of that money's going. Also cash flow statements, so important for small business owners. How is the cash flow trending? Because we know that's the number one, 90% of small businesses fail because of cash flow. So important to keep an eye on this and very easily understood graph. You can go in here and look at any of these specific numbers but there's your cash flow. And then we also have a cash flow forecast. With that being said, that that's a big problem with them. What this allows you to do is go in here and adjust money in or out of the account. So let's say you have a restaurant client and one of their refrigeration units died. I can go in here and manually adjust that money out of the account to see how it's gonna affect the bottom line. So if we go by that refrigeration unit, am I gonna be able to make payroll this week? Right, so it's a good forecasting tool. Now the next tab over is our sales. And this is where you can do quotes, estimates, and invoices all done the same way. We'll go ahead and create an invoice in just a minute, but you can also do your credit notes and your quick entries. So let's go in here and look at sales invoices. And you can set up your recurring invoices for any timeline that you would like. Um, you can pause them if needed, copy them. Let's go in here and click on create a new invoice. I can choose my customer or I can add a new one on the fly down here. It's gonna bring in my customer information. If I'm doing products or services, let's say that I'm going to sell them a laptop. It's gonna auto-populate my information into my invoice for me. So I've got a Dell laptop, it brought in my ledger account. If I hover over the I button, it's gonna tell me how many I have in stock. I can offer different selling prices. I can offer a flat rate discount or a discount by percentage. 
The tax rate can be defaulted into the customer record or you can choose it here. And again, those classes, I can tie this into any of my different classes that I have set up in here. I can add any attachments that I would like. If I'm not doing products and services, let's say I just want to type my description in here. Let's say that I'm going to charge them an install fee to set the laptop up. I can go in here and say, you know what? It's a $25 charge to set up that laptop. And now I'm going to click down here on save an email. I'm going to put in my email address so I can show you what this looks like all the way through the system because it's really nice. And I'm going to send that invoice to myself. And now let's take a look at it while we're waiting for the invoice to come over. So I'm going to open it up. And here you can, I'm going to refresh it because you should be able to see that it's sent now. There we go tells me exactly when I created it. It shows me it's been sent but not delivered. So it hasn't came to my inbox yet. And it'll show you also when they view it or pay it. You could take the credit card payment. You can be in front of them on the mobile app, taking the payment or even doing the invoice. You could record a partial payment. You can choose, do you even want them to be able to pay online or not, right? Um, and then you have your pack and slips and all of that down here as well. Now the invoice did come over. So let me go ahead and open it up for us. Make this bigger for you. If you got old eyes like me, bigger is better. Um, and right up here at the top, you can see a PDF. So let's go ahead. I'm going to do a quick preview of the invoice so you can see what it looks like. Um, so you can have up to three different logos and you can choose your different templates. Notice it did not put a discount in here because I didn't offer one. So you don't have to worry about that. I can see my Dell laptop. I can see my install fee here. Let's go ahead and go back to the message. Let's say that you just sent me my invoice. I'm gonna click on view invoice. And now they can see what they're being billed for. They have a PDF copy of their invoice and now the customer would click on pay now, everything looks right. They put in their credit card number and they click pay. It tells the customer that it's been approved and they get a paid copy of their invoice. And then in the solution in real time, you'll also see that that invoice has been paid. You can see when they viewed it, they've paid it and there's zero remaining. So invoicing feature is very nice in the solution. We don't have any limits. We don't charge you over a certain tier. Everything in here is, is included unless you are using the credit card process and then you would just pay the credit card process and fee for whoever you use. So you don't have to be worried about being billed for um, extra users or so many invoices. You know, we don't have levels like that. Now, um, quick entries would be, let's say that you have a client that doesn't do invoicing, but they still need to track the income coming into their business, right? So quick entries allows them to do that. So an example of that would be a lawn maintenance company. They don't really invoice their clients, but you, they still need to keep track of the work that they're doing and the income they have coming into their business. So they can be on their little uh, Android phone or their iPad, and they can go in here and say, on this day, I went to this location, 123 Main Street, I cut the grass for them, and I charged them $70. And then after I left their location, I went over to this customer, and I trimmed the bushes there for them, and I charged them $125. Notice you can also tie it into those classes, projects, services, rentals. It's a quick, easy way to get that work into the program so they can see the income coming into their business. And you can import those quick entries right here. You can import um, those quick entries and expenses the same way. So, and then by doing this work in the program ahead of time is when you'll see those matches with the bank feeds right, because it sees these amounts in the program and it's gonna match them up to these transactions for you. Okay, so that's sales. We've looked at expenses under 
contacts, you have your customers and your vendors. If you're on the mobile app, you can also import them straight from the mobile app. But let's go ahead and look at a customer record. And by the way, any of these tables, you can sort them just by clicking on their column header. And then let's go in here and look at a customer record. You can see what's outstanding, overdue, their credit terms, sales to date, sales this year, average sale, their contact information, any of their transactions. Um, you have some little filters here that you can select. You can set up automatic monthly statements to go out on whatever day that you choose. So you don't have to worry about that. You can do account allocations, unlimited contacts and addresses, those payment details, those default options. So their tax rate, their selling price. Um, are they an analysis group or a statement run? Personal data retention. And then any personal notes you would wanna keep about your customers or vendors. Now with the vendors, the big difference with the vendors is that you're also able to go in here and mark them as 1099 vendors. So if you are tracking your 1099 vendors, right here's where you would go in here and mark them as a 1099 vendor to be able to run that report. Now let's look at products and services. I just wanna to check to see if any other questions have came over that I might've missed. All right. Um, so products and services right here at the down arrow, again, where sh is where you would import items. You can have stock items, non-stock items, and service items. You just upload that CSV. And you can see here that I have a bunch of non-stock items in here. I have some service rates that I have set up here. They can be yearly, quarterly, hourly, fixed rates. I have some inventory items. It's telling me right here, one is below its reorder level. Let's go ahead and look at our laptop that we build. I can see everyone I've built that laptop to, how many I have in stock, what my reorder levels are. If I need to adjust my stock level, I just go in here and say, hey, I just got uh, five more laptops in stock. Now, instead of saying four, it's gonna say nine. I'm no longer below my stock level. I can also go in here and edit the information. So um, the item information, my different selling prices, my GL accounts, who I buy it from and what's the cost price, where is it located, do I want it in, to be in a specific class that I'm, I'm doing, um, so very customizable. And then, once you are done with your products and services, we've looked at banking. Let's go in here and look at our adjustments. So you have your journal entries. And right now, payroll's brought in through a journal entry from whatever solution that you're using. A lot of our accountant professionals are using QuickBooks or ADP or, and you would just simply go in here and do a journal entry. Um, payroll is on the roadmap and it should be available soon. Um, but right here's where you can add your attachments as well. And then we also have correct transactions. And what you can do there is go in here and let's say that you have a client using this and they coded a bunch of things to the wrong GL code. It allows you to go in here and correct that GL code and shows you the ledger accounts that were um, included in that correction. Now let's look at a few of the reporting capabilities in here. So we do have our standard reports. We, you can mark them as your favorites. And then that Sage Intelligence reporting, that custom report builder that I was telling you about, let's take a look at one of those reports because those are the kind of reports that your clients probably would like to see. So this business snapshot, let's go ahead and run this report. I'm gonna go ahead and say, let's just choose 2019 and let's go ahead till the end of the year. And while we're waiting for this report to run, we'll go back in there and look at some of the standard reports. We have our standard profit and loss report. And you can go in here and choose any reporting period or a custom date range. If you're doing those classes that we mentioned earlier under more, 
is where I can go in here and say, okay, I want to run this report over all of my rental properties or a individual rental property. You have full drill down capabilities into the reports. They're all exportable by CSV and PDF. So let's go ahead and take a look at these professional fees. So I'm going to click on professional fees and it's going to bring up my professional fees report. And now I can go in here and click on a transaction and it's going to bring up that transaction for me. So this happens to be an invoice. I can see that they've not quite viewed it yet. So I can see the status of that invoice, but you do have full drill down capabilities from the reports. We have comparative reports. So you can go in here if you want to compare one year over another year, one month over another month, and you can choose that. So let's go in here and just choose 2020. Let's use cumulative values and show our profit for each section right here's where those classes would be. But I'm going to go ahead and calculate this report. So to bring in my full year and plus put my totals down here, percentage totals at the end right here. For my revenue, my cost of sales and my expenses, and I can see my gross profit loss and percentage of profits. And it gives me my totals down here at the bottom as well. And then I can also do comparisons. So maybe I want to compare one month over another, one year over another. Again, I can put in those custom date ranges and it's going to show me the difference between those two periods over here on the right hand side. And I can also see my gross profit and percentage of profit difference. And let's go and look at a couple more reports and we'll go back into Sage Intelligence that report should be finished. Um, and does not look like it finished. Let's do it again. Don't know what happened there. Could be these storms we're having, it's awful slow. Let me um, go back into here and just wanna make sure I can show you those reports are really nice. Okay, so let's open up Sage Intelligence and it's going to upload those reports there. So while we're waiting for that, we have our balance sheet, trial balance, your aging reports for accounts receivable, accounts payable, your cash report. So cash flow forecast, cash flow statement, unreconciled bank transactions, your credit card solution reports, data reports, stock movement, um, your tax reports. A lot of times I'm asked if I'm running accrual, can I print my reports in cash basis? And you can. Uh, remember in settings where we went and chose cash or accrual, you would just go back, change it to cash, print your reports, and then you can change it back to accrual. Not a problem at all. We have our chart of accounts. We have that audit trail that we I mentioned earlier, but let's go ahead and take a live look at it. It's going to show you everything that's being done in the program. Under more is those other filters. So let's say that we have a client and we thought they made a mistake with the vendor payment. I can click on vendor payment and now it's going to bring up all of my vendor payments. I can see the transaction date, which account it hit, whether it was a debit or credit, whether they deleted it, who created it. And again, I can click right on it to go right into that transaction to take a look at it. So the audit trail is really nice. Um, you have your general ledger report, sales revenue, profit analysis, and sales and purchase day books. Let's go back out here and look at Sage Intelligence again. So we're going to rerun this. Let's see if it's going to cooperate with us this time. So 2019, and then let's go to December and let's run it. And what it's going to do is pull that information out of Sage Accounting. And that's going to be this business snapshot report. But when you click on details, it's going to tell you what you can expect to see in any of these reports. Um, when we hover over the red plus button here is where you're going to be able to import reports or build reports. It's got a custom report builder to help you build new reports very quickly. Um, and this should be populating in just a moment. But these are the nice colorful reports. So a lot of times your clients, 
they struggle with looking at black and white, but these are have nice pie charts, the bar charts on here, um, your ratios, your percentages, and that's very easy for them to take a quick look at and understand what you're trying, the point that you're trying to get a par across about their business. So I'm sorry, this does not usually take this long. I think it's populating now. I think these storms are uh, slowing down the internet service out here. But here's your business snapshot. So it's they're nice reports to look at. You've got your gross profit percentage, your net profit percentage, your pie charts, your bar charts for profit and loss, your top overheads. If we go to the next tab, you'll see your profit and loss um, with all the different GL accounts. And then the last tab showing you a balance sheet um, with some current ratios over here. So you've got your current ratio, debt to equity ratio, debt to asset and return on equity. So it's a pretty nice uh, little snapshot of the business. If I click the back button, now it takes me back to my other reports where I can go out here and look at the financial hygiene of the business, trend analysis. If I click up here to additional reports, I have my sales flash reports, cash book analysis, stock movements, top customers. That one allows you to pull up your top 5, 10, 15, 20 customers by location and by what they order from you. So it's pretty cool to, to see these reports. Um, now hovering over the plus button is where you can create new reports. We have this quick report builder that's going to ask you what type of columns and rows do you want to put in the report, help you build a new report quickly. You can import reports. So if you've got reports in another solution that you love to use, just import it in here. And you can create a folder like I have over here of all of your custom reports. So that is Sage Intelligence. So all of your reporting needs, and again, that's included in the solution, nothing's extra. Um, and then let's go over here to settings now. And this is where you would set up the program. Um, any additional settings like your transaction settings. So your customers, um, default ledger accounts, your vendors, your payments and credits, your products and services, different selling prices, your accounting settings. We looked at the invoice settings. Um, so you can do different templates and logos in here. Um, so there's your different templates. You can have up to three different logos, your colors, fonts, sizes. The next area is gonna walk you through your document preferences. So your headers, your prefixes and numbering. What do you want your next quote or estimate to start out with in the program? Your invoice. Your tax breakdown lines, is it a product or service-based company? You can customize all of these different areas of the program. Let's go back to settings. Um, we looked at check printing, document emails. We have default email messages set up for all of these different transaction types. You saw it when I sent the invoice. And they are available in English and in Spanish. And by the way, you can turn this whole program into Spanish as well if you prefer. Okay, let's go now to, um, we talked about the statements that you can set up to go out on whatever day that you choose. Some interest analysis types. This is where we talked about that customizing of those classes. Where you're gonna track the information is what's important because you can set up transaction and group analysis where you're tracking the data is when you're working with sales invoices, expenses or bills, banker payments and journals. Totally customizable. I have a lot of real estate people using this. So I clicked on the pencil right here and I just named this rentals. And then I went in here and we put in each rental location that they had. That way as they're doing invoices or they're do, spending expenses, getting it set up for the next family or they're depositing the rent payments or doing a journal, they can choose each rental property and then run that report to see what their profit and loss is for each one or all of their rental properties. Maybe you have a handyman 
and they ask you how much of my income is coming into my business for my deck jobs versus my roofing jobs or my different store locations, which was asked earlier. You can customize this to whatever you want these to be, projects, right? Now, group analysis, where you're tracking that data is when you're working with your customers, your vendors, your non-stock services or stock items. So some examples here would be different departments. So are you doing tax, financial, or CFO work for them? Are they in the South, North, East, or West? I have churches using this. Is it for mission trip or tithes? Different vendor groups, right? So are they residential or are they commercial? Different product groups, that landscaping company. Are we tracking the landscaping plants, hardscaping, or ponds? And if you go to set this up and you still have, you need some clarification, everywhere you go in the program, you'll see these little question marks. And again, that takes you to the step-by-step -step instructions and it'll show you how you can set these analysis types up, what reports you can run with them. Um, you know, so it's going to take you in here and give you all the step-by-step -step instructions. And then you can also just chat with support real quickly if you have an, a question and they can answer it for you as well. So that is the analysis types, dimensional accounting. Um, and then you have your foreign currencies in here with live exchange rates. So we have about every currency you can think of in here. And you can set those up. So I have the Canadian dollar, the peso and the Philippine peso. Um, it's going to track your gains and losses if you're using live exchange rates. Your credit card connections, um, this is extra because not from us, but from whatever credit card program you're using, um, like Stripe, you can go in here, it's gonna tell you it's 2.9%. So it'll tell you um, what the fees are and you can either create account or sign into an account that you already have. A lot of people using PayPal, you can use PayPal in here. Um, we also have Payo, which is a full credit card solution. So you can track, um, do ACH and get those credit card reports. And you would set those up just like you would a bank. All right, I see a question came over. Um, let me pause here. So I did the locations. Are there tiers of analysis types? Can they nest in a hierarchy? There is not hierarchies. Um, you would just set them up as individual analysis types um, right there. And can you have more than one analysis types per transaction or line of transactions? Yes. So remember uh, when we went into that invoice or that bill, you had the choice of stacking those. So if I went into this one and I'm going to edit it, you go, to, you go to the three dots at the end of the line, and this is where you could tie it to a rental property, to a service or a project. And these would be, think about whatever type of business you're setting up, that's how you're going to be able to track those. So absolutely. Oh, no problem at all. I'm, I'm throwing a lot of information at you. So um, I love the questions, just keep them coming over. So, that, that's the analysis types, the currencies. Um, if you have a Google Drive, you can go in here, connect your Google Drive. It's gonna keep a copy of all your quotes, estimates, and invoices saved there for you. So you don't have to open up the program if you're looking to send them a document. Um, and then you have some other customizations here. If you hover over the little red plus button, you can do a one-click entry. So if you wanted to quickly go in here, do a new sales invoice or do a new estimate, um, add a new customer, very easy to do that on the fly. Now, that is a high level overview of the solution. When you're done working in your client's books, what you're gonna do is click up here to the gold bar and click here to resume being yourself, which takes you back out to your dashboard. And now you could go into your next client's books and work in their books as well. 
Okay, so that is Sage Business Cloud Accounting. Again, you can invite your clients very easily, $12.50 per month for as long as they use it. And you're gonna be able to go in there and set permissions for them. Um, before I go to the next solution, which is going to be auto entry, I just wanna pause here, see if there's any other questions. Um, if anybody wants their complimentary accounts, make sure that you put that in there and we'll get you the link to set up your accountant's edition. Um, and then we will go ahead and look at our auto entry solution. Because I have this one of questions yes, go ahead. before you go Absolutely. on. So um, I guess, wow, I, I'm sure Chardet probably has some questions also. So that's great, getting a nice deep dive look at Sage's cloud accounting. I'm also curious about the rest of the Sage ecosystem and I guess how they compare as far as um, which Sage solutions are the right fit for different customer needs so that we can make sure that we're aligning our customers with the correct solution for them. Oh, hey, look at this. And then also the pricing for each of those solutions. So you dove in, you, you talked about the 1250 if we're hosting for our client for um, Sage Cloud Accounting. Um, and I'm curious, you know, when people get to more of an enterprise level and is it easy to transition between Sage products? Yes, yeah, so the pricing is gonna be more in Terry's um, arena, and I'm sure that I'll, I'll let her talk um, and, and give you some information on that. But as far as our other solutions, um, we have small business solutions, we have medium business all the way up. You won't outgrow Sage. Um, we have cloud solutions, we have hybrid solutions, we have desktop solutions, and we don't force anybody to go on either, either side. So, um, and as far as pricing, they're, you know, Sage Intact, people love it's AICPA um, endorsed. It's a great solution, cloud solution. You're not going to outgrow them. On our website, it's going to give you a lot of information as well. Um, and then as far as the question of converting, like our Sage 50 cloud product, a lot of our accountant professionals are using that. It does payroll, robust inventory, serial number track in, um, job costing uh, really well. We actually have a conversion tool. So it will convert your QuickBooks uh, account straight into Sage 50. Wow. So with accounting, it's more of the, the little um, Excel spreadsheets, you know, making it very easy, but with Sage 50 Cloud. And I can show you real quick, here's our Sage 50 Cloud. If I go to file and I go to convert a company, it's gonna show you that you can convert um, those QuickBooks companies right here. And it takes all of your QuickBooks data and pushes it right into Sage 50. So when you say QuickBooks data, um, it says Pro Premier and Enterprise. So that's converting from QuickBooks desktop. What about QuickBooks online? Um, it will do that as well. We've got a, uh, a team that can do that. What they basically do is just convert it into um, the other format and then push it right into the program. Okay. And you were saying in Sage Cloud Accounting that um, they're not, they haven't rolled, you haven't rolled out a Sage payroll tool yet, but that it integrates with other payroll op, um, tools. What payroll options integrate with Sage Cloud Accounting? So right now it's just putting it in there as a journal entry. So whatever whatever a, a payroll that you're using, you're just going to put it into Sage Accounting as a journal entry. Okay. So it's simply just putting in that journal entry for, for right now. But it sounds like Sage 50, you do have payroll tools in that tool. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yes. Totally customizable, unlimited pay types. You can do your state and federal taxes. You can, uh, Sage 50 is what our accountant professionals are using. Um, you can do first in, first out, last in, first out, specific, average, inventory, job tracking, um, billable. It's got a timekeeper in there. I saw the timekeeper <laughs> on your slide with um, the, the ecosystem and it looked like that was kind of a separate tool or is that included with Sage 50? With Sage 50, there is a time 
keeper element in there where you can keep track of time. And we can do a demo of Sage 50 um, at some point if you would like. I would love to show you that solution as well. Yeah. But you can keep track of time and then push it into invoices against jobs all the way through the system, the payroll, everything. Now, with your accountant dashboard, um, if you have clients on Sage Cloud Accounting and clients on Sage 50, are they all showing up in the same dashboard or are there different dashboards with the different products? There are different dashboards. This would be the accountant dashboard and then Sage 50 has its own dashboard where when you open it up, you would see all of your customers here. And for the accountants uh, version, you get 50 different companies that's included in that. Um, and you can be working in multiple companies at the same time. Okay. So what is the pricing like for Sage 50? Um, that would be Terry. <laughs> Terry. So uh, for Sage 50, we offer um, a special addition to our accountants. It's a version that includes the pro premium and quantum additions of Sage 50. So um, if you have clients on those individual versions, you don't have to house all three. You get one software with all three involved. Um, and we give five users as well. So five licenses that can all be downloaded twice. So if you have, you know, work computer and a home computer, or if you have a desktop and a laptop you carry with you when you travel, um, you would have access to both. Um, and just the base price of the software, and this includes um, training and being able to certify on the software and your unlimited priority support is 824 a year. Um, and then from there we can add Payroll, payroll is based on the number of um, transactions, payroll transactions you process in a month based, um, so it's based on that, but it's an annual cost. So for, um, I believe it's 100 transactions is $109 a year for 100 transactions a month. Um, and then it moves up in tiers, 100, I think it's 250 is 159 going up to unlimited at 400 a year. So you could have the product with unlimited payroll for 1200 and, and basically $1,250 a year. Okay, so it looks like this is a desktop tool, not a cloud tool, is that correct? It's a hybrid. So it's a it's a desktop model that can be pushed to the cloud. And I, I can let Lisa kind of show you that. Yeah, so it is a hybrid. So you can go in here and you can share the company up to the cloud and then be able to work in the company in the cloud as long as you have it um, installed on that device. And you can set up other users to work in the cloud with you as well, as long as they have it, again, installed on their device. Okay. And you mentioned certification and education for Sage 50. Is there any certification or education with Sage Cloud Accounting? Yes. So you can go in here and if we click on the help up here at the top, um, Here's all of our resource center. So you can choose any of our different products that we have. And there is Sage University. You can create a free profile, go in here with Sage Cloud Accounting. You can become a certified advisor free of charge. There's all kinds of classes and training you can take in here. Um, we have a Facebook page with like-minded professional professionals out there. Um, we have a lot of different resources where you can go in here, um, community groups and work with others. Um, that's, you know, not only using Sage, but QuickBooks Zero, you know, like-minded professionals. So yes, the training is included um, in the solutions and you can become certified advisors. Okay. Um, and you also mentioned your help earlier, the chat support. Um, is there any phone support or is it just through chat? On the online program, it's chat within the program with Sage 50. It's chat in the program or we have a uh, dial-in numbers as well, U.S.-based support. Okay. So, but there's no That's phone support for Sage Cloud Accounting? No. For our online solutions, they, they don't do um, people we found out that people prefer to be able to chat live in the program when they're having an in. So they dropped the phone uh, support on that and D 
the chat works great because usually within just a couple minutes you're actually chatting with the support rep. Okay. And, and I would add to that that if there were, um, I, I do have clients who um, were having like having trouble getting their inventory imported. And it was you know, an issue with how they were building their, um, their, um, their CSV file. And we do have where the, the support rep will say, you know what, we need to jump on a call. This is more than what we can do through a chat. And they'll jump on, they will get on a call with you and schedule a call, but um, there's not a phone number that you can call, um, but it's just as needed, they will um, set up calls with you. And emails. Mm -hmm. Any questions from you, Shredé? I know that I just rambled off like 15 right in a row. Leslie, <laughs> you, you asked a lot. Um, I did, one of my questions um, had to do with like additional tools, like accountant tools that like um, QuickBooks has to offer, like reclassifying tools. So I find when I have, you know, potentially new clients, um, I have to do a lot of cleanup. And so that reclass, you know, a bulk, a mass reclass tool is really helpful in that sense when um, customers um, or clients uh, class their uh, transactions wrong. Um, are there additional tools based off of like accountant accountants or? Yeah, and that's primarily why we do the um, the Excel files in here, because that's one thing that we've heard a lot is that they just don't want to convert the the whole account in, they want to clean it up before they mm -hmm. just do a conversion. So with these Excel files, that's what you can do. They, they can easily clean up the, the data set before they push it through. We do have the adjustments up here. So if things mm -hmm. were coded to the wrong account that you can go in here and do those mass um, corrections to a different GL account. Okay. And then in Sage 50, if you did not want to convert the company, um, we also have where you can go in here and you can just import or export and it'll show you the different files or fields that you can bring in for all of the different um, areas of the program. So should you have a client that you're working in and their books are really messed up, you have the ability to go in here and clean that up before you start in a new program. Um, and forgive me so, if you already did uh, discuss this and go over it. Um, are you able to attach um, PDFs, you know, images to uh -huh. transactions? Yes. Yeah, so you can, um, in the invoicing, it was down. Uh, we did a bill. Remember, we brought in a, well, yeah. actually, we did it through banking, through that um, when we bought the donuts and then. Um, with your invoices here, uh -huh. you can bring in your transactions right here, download, okay. and then with expenses, you can also bring in your, your uh, transactions. So yeah, it's across the program where you can go in here and... Are there any additional file storage? Um, like say, like uh, the, the client needs to get information um, to us, you know, like a, I'm an attachment section. Um, where they can upload certain things. Um. On the mobile app, they can upload anything that they want into the program, and then it would reside with whatever um, transaction that it would be coming in for. Now, auto entry was where I was going next, and that's what auto entry is a document storage oh, um, program, and it's cloud based. and it's going to allow you to work across your different accounting platforms. So whether you're using QuickBooks, Xero, Sage, um, it really helps with rebuilds. And if you have a lot of paper, a lot of manual document uh, order entry that you're doing, you mm -hmm. can basically, let's say you get a, a new client and they have a bunch of paper bank statements in PDF mm -hmm. form. You can scan that paper bank statement into auto entry and it's going to push it into a digital format where you can push it right into your accounting package. Got it. Okay. So instead of having to hand key that PDF or that paper bank statement, it's going to push it, put it in a uh, format where you can push it through. You can set up your clients in here to have access to it. It does line item capture. It auto codes recurring transactions. And this is your document storage. Um, so I don't know if... Um, yeah, 
a closing books feature so that anything any prior information can't be um, tagged with. Yes, that was in the settings, um, and I don't I don't expect you to remember all this, but it was in settings, um, and that where what you would do is go in there and set up the um, fiscal year and accounting method. You could set up your lockdown dates here where they can't go back and change anything prior to that date. Awesome. And then how often do you guys have updates to the systems, you know, to make changes for improvements? Yeah, I mean, they, they will roll in some oddball updates as needed, but. Uh -huh. And where, well, on, the training, where will the trainings um, happen it, um, to be notified um, on these types of updates? It'll pop into the solution. And then also under the what's new, it's going to show you what's new and tell you all about the feature. Um, okay. You can find out, you know, and it gives you the links to new updates that's that's being put into the program. So kind of little pop up in messaging tools, but then also under the little question mark under what's new is going to keep track of all the new features that's coming in. Okay, great. Thank you. Sure. Now, did you, I know we're running short on time. Did you want me to jump into auto entry or do you ha still have some more questions on the accounting solution? This is for you guys, so. I, um, I think sure. I'm all right for now. Um, Ingrid? Okay. So I'm just going to sign in real quick to auto entry. I know we only have a few minutes left, but just so you guys can see what this looks like. Um, this is cloud, pure cloud, works on Macs as well. Um, you can set up all of your different accountants, uh, accounting um, clients' books here. And basically, you, when you go to set it up is when you're going to go in here and put in the the information to set up the account. It, let's say that you're using a different invoicing feature. Um, it gives you email addresses. So if they want to send in or copy you in on an invoice or bills, they can send that right to the program. I use my mobile app just about for everything um, with auto entry as well. You click on integrations. This is the different accounting packages that you can connect to it in here. Um, it also does document fetching, so you can go in here if you want it to go out there and document fetch your, your T-Mobile phone bills, your electric bills, your gas bills, you can connect your suppliers, um, so it automatically fetches those documents. And then from your dashboard, you're able to see how many bills you have, invoices, bank statements, vendor statements, expense reports. Um, given other people permissions to be able to drop information in here as well. So let's go in here and just look at um, some of the bills that we have in here. So it's going to remember how you categorize your transactions and automatically categorize them for you. If you click on the little eyeball, it's going to show you that receipt. So you'll always have your receipts in here. And then what it's going to do is once you go over here and look at everything and you click publish, it's going to send it right to my accounting package. And now I'm going to my next transaction. Now for that bank statement that I mentioned earlier, because this is what a lot of our accountant professionals use it for, they get paper bank statements. And normally it's, you know, they have to hand key that in. With auto entry, you can go in here and under upload is where you're going to be able to drop them in here. Um, you can scan that paper bank statement in and then it puts it in a digital format for you. So right here we're looking at my paper bank statement and you'll notice that it brought it over here and put it in a digital format. All I have to do is go up here to download and tell it to push it to my QuickBooks account or my Xero account or my Sage account, right? And it pushes it into this the right format so I can put it into my accounting package. So right here, I'll show you what that looks like. This Gwinnett Neurology for 356.75. If I go back into my accountant's version and go to banking, I've actually imported that bank statement in here 
and I can see my imported transactions. And here's that Gwinnett Neurology. Now I can go in here and work it through my bank like I normally, you know, instead of having to hand key that data. But your documents are always going to be here. So when you asked about that document storage, you're always going to have that here um, as well. So, and then another thing I was going to show you bills. Let's go in here and let's say that you had a bill that you sent over. If I go to archived, let's look at this uh, bill right here. It does line item detail. So I can choose each of my line items and how I want to categorize them, right? I can see them over here on my bill. And then when I go into like Sage and I want to look at that in this solution, it's going to bring in that statement as well. So if I go over here to my expenses and I go in here to this ARIA right here and I open up that expense that came in from auto entry. Here's all of my line items. I can see my bill here. If I go under my file, there's the bill from auto entry that it pushed right into my accounting package. Um, and with auto entry, you're paying for the amount that you use. So you we have different tiers. They roll over for three months at a time. Um, you can change tiers at any time. And we can offer you a um, trial account of this with some free credits as well. And if you'd like to play around with this and see how this is going to work with um, the accounting solutions that you're already using. And then if you and you know decide that you want to use Sage, it would you can work it across your different accounting packages. Are there any sort of like dummy accounts you can use to to try out things, you know, some theoreticals? Um, we, we give you, uh, complimentary accounts and you can go in here, like if you decided to do auto entry, you mm -hmm. can connect it with an account that you're using and go ahead and give it a live try of just pushing a couple documents over to that platform. Um, whether, you know, QuickBooks, if you wanted to take a couple receipts or a paper bank statement, go ahead and give it a try instead of having to hand key that data. So... Um, let me go back out here. I, I want to be respectful of your time, but that's auto entry and you're going to have all of this information um, in the PowerPoint. There's some, you know, our third party integration, Sage University for training, our Facebook page, our award winning solutions. As far as pricing, Terry will be able to get that for you. And this is her information. Um, and Terry, I'll let you come back on. I'm going to be quiet now. Thank you for the opportunity to present to you guys. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. So I will go ahead and email both of you um, the complimentary link for accounts for the business cloud accounting. It does have, um, all you have to do is put your information in and, it'll, and you'll get into the software. And it does have the dummy account in there that you could play with in inside business cloud accounting. I'll also send over the um, the link for the auto entry account. And with that, you'll have 25 free credits. So you can go in if you want it and like Lisa said, create an account and send, um, you know, upload some some items and see how that works for you, see what you what you think. And if you'd like a deeper dive demo of that um, auto entry or Sage 50, we can definitely get those scheduled for you. Sounds yeah, great. That, yeah, that was very thorough. Thank you. Okay, so with that, we're at the top of the hour. So I think we'll go ahead and close down and we'll be sure to, um, if anybody has any questions, send them your way, Terry. Thank you so much. And thank you. Thank Bella. you so much for letting us join. We appreciate it. This is great. Have a wonderful day. Thanks. Yes, you too. as well. Thank you. Bye-bye.